What's that? Some politicians not gonna, are, not, are not gonna like what I said. Not too many, not too many people know the whole inside story of the of the um, the Jerome Avenue situation. But have you told me everything? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I told you everything. All these all these neighborhoods are gonna be changed. But if, why would politicians not like it? Because they don't they don't want people to know exactly what the bottom line is. There's a lot of things here that are being done wrong. The community is not happy. The community be, is being hurt, especially, it's not just the business that are gonna leave, they're gonna be displaced. It's the, it's the tenants, because they all live around the neighborhood. I have all the record of, records of it. They all live around the neighborhood. And then if they get displaced, where are they gonna go? There's no place to go. There's no place to house them. Because they, of a hundred businesses in five years are going to be out of here. You have over two dozens already out. This is a cluster of... But you, you haven't actually said anything too much about the politicians. Well, I don't want... I, because I don't have to get... I don't like to get involved with, you know, saying about anything. He this, don't do, that, don't do. When you see the product... When you see, hang on, just slow down for a second. Why is this blink over here in this sector? You know why? Good, it's uneven around here. Well, it's, it's planning for the future. But I mean, when you say politicians, you haven't really said anything to me that's controversial. No, because the simple reason is that you have to add one and one and make it two when I tell you that this shouldn't happen, what's happening to all these businesses, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be allowed to happen without a plan to do what to do with these people. They did not plan the city, the New York City, all the, everybody that's involved in it. When it comes to building, when it comes to displacing, when it comes to new development, all those people only plan to build. They never plan to, to what to do with the people that, that, that are there in the, in the community. Never. They never did. I, I used to ask them, what is your plan? DCP never gave me a, a, an answer. Because they didn't have one. So you could deduct from there. If you, if, if you, if you know the politicians that are in charge of all these neighborhoods, and, and this is being done, and this is taking place, You only have to add up the name of it, who is in charge. The only ones that did something to help me out was Fernando Cabrera and, and Vanessa Gibson. Vanessa Gibson is number one. I have a lot of respect for that lady. She tried to help us out. But she said the rezoning was good for the neighborhood. Yes, the rezoning was good, but she couldn't do no more than what she did to remedy this, this situation because she, she has so many people against her that wanted to do it, okay? Starting from the top all the way to the bottom. What, what's gonna happen then? When you have everything on top of you, you try to get the best out of it. The best you could do, she, she got $1.5 million for the people that are gonna be relocated, okay? How much they're gonna be for, 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 for um, business? Nothing, hardly nothing. So you, you said that uh, Vanessa Gibson did the most for the community. She always been uh, to the automotive community. Yes, she always welcomed me. She always, she always, and her position but, to try to help the community. Yes. But, but you never mentioned anything about Dia, Ruben Diaz Jr. What did he do? I never, I never met him for nothing. Did he? What role did he play in the rezoning? I mean, he's the borough president. Uh, then you. you I cannot say anything against him because if he's the board president, this happens under his watch. And this is happening. You think he's in, that means he's in favor of what was happening here. He's allowing it to happen. He's on board with, with the changes. Okay. Why didn't he uh, go over and say, listen, I want these people to be taken care of and not be left um, alone or displaced without any place to go. The plans were never made. 
Did he ever contact you? No. Did Ruben Diaz Jr. ever contact you or the automotive workers you mean, about helping these people? I never saw him here in, the, in, the, in Jerome. Yet he wants to be the first Hispanic mayor. I don't know. Good luck for him. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. A, I'm, I'm. I'm apolitical. Can you be apolitical? I am apolitical. I only. I only defend the community against anybody, whoever it is, not doing the right thing for the community. I am against it, and I speak. You know, I will speak be, um, against it. But you can only speak so much. Because then what happens is you'll be accusing, accusing people. And I don't want to accuse nobody of doing nothing or, 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 or neglecting things. Let the, let the, the, let the tree fall where it, where, it, where it belongs to fall. If it's going to fall, it's going to fall. You know, whatever was designed to be there, that's it. That's the gravity and that, that is the, part, the, the problem. You could, you could tilt it to, to, to... Let me ask you something. You went to these meetings with the Department of City Planning. Vision Every meeting. single one of them. They all, they all lied. They said there was not going to be no rezoning at the beginning. Oh, no, it's not going to be no rezoning. Said, you're going to rezone this year. There's no way that you're going to build any, any, uh, any, any housing in any, any place in, in an um, in a, in a industrial sector. You can't do it. There's no permits for an industrial sector for you to build. Nothing that is residential. You have to change the zoning. Boom, bingo, there you go. There was no plans. They did not have a plan. The New York City, from the top to the bottom, never had a plan. And they, I don't know why. But, but who, what do you mean, who lied? The Department of City Planning. They lied to me, in my face. They said there's not gonna be no rezoning, uh, three years ago. And I said, you're gonna have to rezone. I know that you're gonna you're gonna resume. No, they said no. And they used to hate to get together with me. I just went to I went to City Hall and everything to meet with them. To have a plan. I had a plan. Listen, listen you need to do A, B, C, D. This is what you need to do. A five-year plan to put all these businesses in fully compliant. To to um educate all the all the all the uh, business, uh, business owners and their employees. And the plan was to build a hub, a center, like a mall. Horizontal versus vertical. Horizontal is two and a half miles. You could have put it vertically and 180,000 square footage of footprint. The, the Department of City Planning told you there would be no rezoning? Yes, at the beginning, three years ago. The, the people that were in charge of the, of the Department of City Planning and I'm not afraid to say it because that's the truth. It was right in front of a lot of people, people that, that could, that could, people that could say yes, they, they did it because they, they were there together with me. On the meetings, we used to have the meetings, and the meetings were nothing but propaganda. I'm very dissatisfied in the way they did it. They should have done a better job in, in doing what they need to do to prepare the community for the transition to prepare the community that built out of the ashes this community the way it is now. Never, nobody ever wanted to come over and even to the South Bronx because it's nothing for charcoal, all abandoned buildings. And look what happens now. They invested their life savings. They invested sweat and tears. They invested the time Monday through Saturday, sun up to sun down for decades. Now they have to, they have to be displaced. Guess, guess, your guess is as good as, good as mine. I had a plan. That's sad though, isn't it? And I presented to the city. I said, listen, they all horizontally like that. Let's... And you know the problem was? That every single business was going to be the owner of their own space. They were going to own their own space like a co-op style, like a condo. You have, you have a space, you're going to have to give a down deposit, a deposit, and you would be owner of your... In other words, nobody would be owning the, 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 the building. There was no time, no place for nobody to put their hands in the cookie jar because they were going to own that. And there was, it, it was, it was the banks that were willing to, to be involved in, on, on lending the or, or, or putting the um, the mortgages for the 50 percent. And the federal government has a plan for the businesses to put 40 percent for the businesses, and the businesses would have to put 10 percent. But they would own their own building. They would own their own center, a mall, 
and that's what it is. And, and an IBZ, an industrial business zone, where they're not going to bother nobody. And every single business would be successful. And that's not what happened? No, it was rejected. So these people built this out of the ashes of the burning Bronx? Yes, and out of the ashes. They, 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 they took this and they built it back to the way it is right now. Nobody wanted to even come to the Bronx before. It was nothing but charcoal and abandoned buildings in the 70s and the 80s when, when the whole entire South Bronx was burned by the landlords to, to get the, the insurance. Everybody knows that. I don't, you know, there's nothing new. I'm not telling you anything new. But what I'm telling you new right now is that if they continue this, this is going to be a disgrace for all these people in power that are taking these communities, rezoning them, and saying the hell with whoever lives there, because that's what that's the way that I, the only way that I could put it. How are you gonna build something that is, is being occupied right now? You have them to displace them. And then if you don't have no plan to put them, where to go put them, what do you think of them? If it was garbage, I guarantee you the the the, the, the sanitation of the department would have picked up all the garbage. If it were animals, the AFS, ASPCA would have picked up all the animals because it would be an outrage for the whole entire world. But now these are human beings. These are people that put all their life here together and making a living and supporting the community, supporting the, this over here, 97% is, is, is Latino and, 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 and minority. People of color, they send money to, 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 to their families and their countries to support them. They, they support the community because they all live in the community and they live from this, the small businesses here and they give services to the businesses, to the, to, the, to the other businesses and the community, the creating jobs. What are you doing? Okay, you're creating new jobs. But what happened to the old jobs that were there? Or in other words, you're building the most beautiful house on top, of, on top of, of, of a cemetery. What are you doing? You're building your, 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 your mansion on top of tombstones because that's what's going to happen to these businesses. They're all going to die, all of them. They're going to be very, very little, all of them that are going to be left over because they will not be able to withstand that rent that is they're going to be paid and the competition to the new businesses that are coming over from somewhere else. And this was once the Bronx burning. This was once the ashes. Yes, when the, when the Bronx were burned down, all this year was abandoned. Okay, this was this was rebuilt out of nothing. This is something that is like a child. It it was born, but in the wrong place, and it was born occupying the wrong space. Now it has to go. Where is it going to go? Nobody knows. It was never planned. That's the end. That's the end of my interview. All right, listen, uh, Pedro, I need to get you, have to give you your permission to use this footage in a documentary. Can you say that? I'll give you my permission to use this footage. If this, if this footage is going to be used for the good of the community and bring clarity to the obscurity that is being perpetrated here, I give the authorization to use it. Just in the the God Almighty Lord, you know, use it in good faith and good use it to demonstrate that the community is not being helped by the way that they are operating and conducting themselves by re re gentrifying our community, giving a new landscape, a better look, but of, of a whose who's back are you carrying this? The whole entire community is carrying everything in their back. All right. All right, Pedro, thanks a million. I think I... I um, you did. You gave me a lot here. I've done... Uh, now, you understand, I, I must be doing something deliberately here on behalf of these people who have spent a year doing this so far. I spent 14 years doing housing. You know what I've always seen over this? Whether it's in the Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Local community media, working with local nonprofits, working with Democrats, working with real estate developers. Do you understand that this is a, this is a, a, 
rising star, you know, the United Auto Merchants, you know, and, and this could be very, you know, if they interpret it or you use it in the wrong, in the wrong way, it could be a lot of, make a lot of damage for the association. I'm doing this because, you know, if, if you, if I trust that you're going to use it in good faith just to demonstrate. That I'm, go I'm going to use this to explain what is going on in the Bronx and has been in recent years around the rezoning, the South Bronx, Kingsbridge Armory, and so on. That's what I'm going to do. To explain to people the connections between the South Bronx, between this rezoning, and what's going on up here. The politicians are saying we're doing this on behalf of the community. Mark Messier is saying we're doing this on behalf of the community. The community is...